So family, we have exits the main part of the mosque and we are headed to another part and then we're going to officially close out and this is more of like the underground part. So that's how we're yes. going to the, the, the uh, Yes, the tower is called Minaret. When it's single tower, it could be just a tower, but when it's part of a mosque, we call it Minaret. It's, uh, the Minaret of the mosque is one of the highest in the world. It's, uh, it's 210 meters high, which is 689 feet. And uh, at night, there is a powerful green laser beam pointing from the top direction the Qibla, which to east. So people from distance, they could see that uh, laser uh, beam to to make it easier for people to know which direction the Qibla is. Wow. Now let's go to the evolution. Let's go. So, as we go inside, by every fountain, there is a, a step, a small step, which is slippery. You just have to be careful, stay away from it, just for safety. Okay. So you see here so many fountains. Yeah. These fountains, this is this room is called Rufat Wudu, which means the ablution room. Before we pray, we do the ablution. We wash our parts before we go to pray. Yeah. So when we do it, this is one of the rooms where we do the ablution. Here we have these fountains where they uh, get filled with water and we do the ablution here. If you look on the top, the, the fountain is inspired with a flower. Can you recognize the shape, the flower from the top? Daisy? No. It's lotus. Lotus flower. The shape from the top. The design. So, when we, uh, uh, when we want to, to do the ablution, they fill it with water and the water starts coming down through these tunnels. And then we go down like this. And then as the water coming down from here, people stand, sit around it and start doing the ablution. And the ablution steps are, you start first from the hand, by the hand, you wash it three times, like this, hand, fingers, and then the mouth, three times, water in and out, and then the nose, three times also, after that, the face, like this, three times, and then the arms until the elbows, three times, and then you wash the head, how many times? Three times. No, one time. One time. <laughs> so the head is only one time. One time. But and the ears. Other parts. Yeah. And then the ears also one time, like this, with your finger. And the last is your feet. You take off your socks and shoes and you clean the feet also three times. This is called the small ablution. And we do this before every prayer. Since we pray five times a day, we do this before the prayer. So all the people from upstairs come down here, do they? No, yes. it's not here uh, in an angle of stairs, but uh, they gotta wash before they Yeah, pray. so some people they come here only only if you happen to be At to work. come across the prayer and if you are working or so, okay. then you come here and do the ablution. But when you if you want if you are coming from home, most people they do the ablution at home. 
and they come here directly to, to pray. If you are not clean, you come here and do the ablution and then you go up. So this is called the small ablution. The big ablution, there is a small ablution and a big ablution. The big ablution is that when you get naked and the water has to touch all over your skin. Basically like taking a shower. And then you get dressed and you do the small ablution after. Any idea when we are required to do the big ablution? I guess. Um, I was say do your um, Ramadan? Do no, no, no. Yeah. Not Ramadan. The, uh, feast? No. No. When when are we required to, to do the, the big sins ablution? Of the world away? I don't yeah. Yeah. No. So we do the small ablution before every prayer. But the big ablution, we do it, we are required to do it after a sexual intercourse with a partner. If you sleep with your partner, then you cannot go and do the, the small ablution directly. You have to do the big ablution first. You get undressed, take a shower, then get dressed, and then you do the small ablution, like I said. And the small ablution, we do, you, we do this before every uh, prayer. And uh, not, uh, so since we pray five times a day, not necessarily we do it five times. So sometimes if I could go to pray now and the next prayer, I can catch it up without uh, renewing the ablution. But when uh, I, should, I don't have to renew it is if I didn't use the bathroom between uh, both prayers. Like if I didn't go to pee or fart, for example. These are things that they break your ablution. If you use the bathroom for whatever reason, you have to renew the ablution. If you are sure that you didn't use it, you uh, you can just go and pray the next uh, the next one. And some sometimes people you know they don't have access to to water or they, it's too cold they don't want to touch the water so you know they hold it until they pray the next one to uh, then after that they use the bathroom. And let's say you are in the desert or you don't have access to the water then uh, if you don't have access to the water you can still do the ablution in different way. You take you take a stone like any stone or uh, a, a special stone you you just put it touch it with your hand like this and do it three times and also on your face so these are equivalents if you are for example in the desert or you don't have access to the water let's say if you're sick some people ask me if we're sick if you are sick you cannot stand you have to do it while you are sick on the chair if you cannot even move you still have to pray only with your heart and eyes so there is no excuse not to pray can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Y'all do everything in significant with numbers. And yeah. do y'all numbers mean, like our numbers mean like three is grace, unity, seven is number so, completion, five number grace. Are y'all with the same? I, I get what you want to say. So for us, we have the odd number. It's uh, it's uh, like a holy number. Mm -hmm. We have five pillars of Islam. Mm -hmm. We pray five times a day. Mm -hmm. There are seven skies, seven heavens. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't signify for every specific number for something. We just like the odd number more than the even. Like if let's say number five, <clears throat> number five. If you divide it by two, you will have two and two, and there will always be one left. Mm -hmm. That one we take it as a uh, like as indicator for loneliness of God. So this is why we like odd numbers. Seven, five, mm -hmm. eleven, mm -hmm. number three. <clears throat> okay. But there is no specific uh, significance for each uh, number. Let's go this way. <laughs> These are also uh, tap waters. Where we do the, it also provides us water, water for the ablution. You push it, it gives you water for a few seconds, and then close. This is to save water. Some people, they just, uh, they, they are careless. They can waste water. Therefore, the, this one, you push it, it gives you water for like a few seconds, and then it closes down automatically to save waste and uh, for water. And you can see there, um, and here is some, Arabic writings, it says, you know an Arabic word means from right to left. So here it says, Al-Mulku Lillah. It's the same phrase duplicated everywhere. And this means uh, God owns everything. Everything belongs to God. This is the meaning of this uh, word. And behind here, on the pillars, the allusion section, so if you get closer, if you can see the pillars, they are made with zilij. 
These are tiles. That's what we call the leash. You can touch it. It's, uh, you can touch it uh, to see how it's made. You can touch this. This is called the leash. This is, uh, uh, this, that's what Morocco is famous for. And that's the origin of it is in Fez. If you see, this is not perfect because it's all handmade. None of it is cut by, by machine. Handicraftsmen from Fez, this is what they are known for. People who made this, they came from Fez. They use every, every piece, they break it with just a hammer and with their hand. They break them piece by piece. And then, yes, after that, they attach them together like a puzzle, one by one. You can imagine how much time it will take you to cover the whole mosque with this. So you can see this is why I asked you to touch it to see how the imperfections of it. It shows that it's handmade, it's not a machine. Yeah. So this is uh, um, this is called Zalish, and that's what uh, Fez is famous for, and Morocco is famous for this, which are tiles. And on the top, the pillars they are made with some materials that they absorb humidity. Because we have copper here, like the chandeliers that you see, they are made with copper. And copper normally turns into green because of the humidity. So they made the mosque in a way that absorbs humidity to not allow the humidity to affect you. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, if you, you guys have the Statue of Liberty, it's green. The original color is not green. It's used to be like this because it's copper. But because of the humidity, this is why it turned into Sitting green. in the middle of the water. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at the bottom of the couple, there is like a small effect of uh, green uh, because of the humidity. At the very bottom of it, you can notice some some green. But from the top, it keeps the original color. This is this uh, incredible beyond belief. So it's everything. Yeah. Wow. Same, the same thing. Yeah, the same thing. They look very familiar. Yeah. 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 So, family, before we were on the top, now we're directly on the bottom. And this is the part where you can wear your shoes. We are on the way out now. If anyone want to use the bathroom, they are at the bathroom in case you want to use it before we go up. If not, then we keep going up. Okay, nobody want to go to the bathroom? Okay. 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 This is also a great exercise family. Alright, Mr. Bomani, let's take some pictures, son. Me and you. Now we back up and here is another view of this, this beautiful courtyard outside of the mosque. Amazing, right? I thought what I saw in Ethiopia was incredible, but that, as far as modern day... Ethiopia wow. is older. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the amazing thing about it, and it's built out of uh, 
you know, like a mountain. So I've never seen anything like, you know, modern to what I saw in Ethiopia. This is the closest thing. And so family, we're about to uh, depart Alassane Mosque in Casablanca and uh, we're gonna continue on with our city tour after we take some photos and... How long is your flight from?